Hey, everybody, we're back with another Matt Men interview this week. Uh, up and coming, uh, on the rise, NWA star, Catalyst Wrestling champion. I want to introduce Colby Carino to everybody. I don't think you need an introduction at this point, right, Colby? I think people know you. No, I mean, not everyone knows me, though. I feel like uh, a little introduction helps. <laughs> uh, you've been up to so much. So, and I have a bunch of questions for you because uh, this, this Friday, you're going to be at Catalyst Wrestling. I'm going to be there also. On the 17th, live from Jersey City, you're defending your title uh, against uh, Darius. And uh, I wanted to, you know, I think this is going to be really cool because I haven't been to. It's funny, like I am like I work very closely with these guys. But for whatever reason, whenever there's a show, there's there's like some sort of tragedy happening in my life that I cannot attend. But this time I'm going to be there. 39 Erie Street, Jersey City. Doors open at 7 p.m. Tickets. 25 to 30 dollars this is a uh, very very cool card and it's great to see that you know independent wrestling is making a comeback right after everything that happened almost two years of everything being shut down uh independent wrestling is back especially here on the northeast what do you think of that oh it feels so good to finally like get back to a, a normal set schedule so to say like um it seems like every weekend i got two or three shows again so um it's a great time. This is how I make my living. So, you know, what was it like for you with with it with you know everything being shut down? Um, listen, I got kids too. <laughs> I got I have the same thing. Mike, I, I locked the door here, but they're they're gonna barge in at one point. So we'll just have the kids on. That's it. They'll just do the interview. <laughs> um, what was it like? You know, eighteen months or nineteen months, whatever you know, whatever the time frame was. That that's very difficult. I would imagine. And everybody else I've spoken, to, even guys at WWE or AEW, you know, to you're so used to doing this regularly on a schedule, you know, two days a week, three days a week, you're working, going from city to city. What was it like being kind of shut down and then getting back on that horse and trying to figure out, okay, am I, am I able to do this again? Well, uh, like during the pandemic, we still uh, open, had the school open by me and I helped train there uh, two nights a week anyway. So it helped like keep me on top of the game a little bit, but um, like there's definitely a transitioning, like going to wrestling in front of no one to yeah. going back to in front of fans. Um, it was, it, it, it was so hard to get used to not wrestling in front of fans. And then we finally get it all back. So yeah, it, and, but it's still, it's still not, you know, I, I it, it's, it's kind of different. Like I'm in hospitality here on here in New York. Right. And I think everybody knows that the restaurant industry has taken a big hit. Performance arts have taken a big hit as well. But the fact that, you know, Jersey City, New York City, back door, uh, are you are you excited to kind of be back at this? Like, OK, you know what? There's a light at this at the end of this tunnel now and things are kind of starting to go back to it. Has there been any kind of change in your schedule and how you train and how, you, how you're prepping for matches now? Uh, Actually, yeah, I, I've been training way more now. Um, I finally moved into a new place. I got a, a whole ring and like indoor uh, gym set up at my house. Oh, so, that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I get a lot of opportunities to train now. So I don't even have to leave the house, really. Listen, you got a partner there, too, to train with, right? You got to get them started early. How, oh, how yes. Young, how young were you when you started? Because I would imagine, you know, your dad, uh, extremely well-known in professional wrestling, uh, you know, I was a big fan of his. I've seen him many times in ECW. I saw him, uh, I guess the last time I saw him was whatever that last ECW show was at the Hammerstein and God, 20 years ago. I can't believe it's 20 years. So how early did you get started? Um, I consider like my first, my actual wrestling debut, uh, when I was 12 years old. So that was 12 and a half years ago. Wow. But if you, you can find videos of me wrestling in tag matches with my dad when I was like four or five years old. I don't really consider that like the start of my career, though. Because, sure. Uh, it, it, it was a little different to uh, nowadays, you know? You know, I, I spoke to somebody that got started very early also. And, I, and I'm and i going to ask you the same question because I'm always fascinated by this. I, I asked this person, you know, did you, was it an easy, like when you decided like, okay, I'm going to now become a professional wrestler and I'm going to, you know, go through it the right way because his, his father was a wrestler as well and he started very young. He told me it was the total opposite. It was... I would imagine like, oh, okay, you know, you have a little bit of an advantage. But he said when he went into a, a system to kind of learn everything from the beginning, it was a lot of bad habits that he had difficulty kind of changing his way because he started so young. Did you, was that, was that a factor for you? Um, no, not really. Like, like you were saying, I, I felt like it was kind of an advantage to me 
because um, I didn't really go in through a traditional wrestling system. Like I started, I, I got asked if I wanted to be in a tag match when I was about 12 years old. And I was like, yeah. And then all my training just started happening before shows that I would go to. Um, and I would just kind of pick up from whoever was around. I didn't go to like a wrestling school per se. Yeah. So I feel like my experiences were a little different than most people. I, I, I mean, I guess, you know, one thing that you had, I guess you could learn the moves, right? I, I, you could learn the moves, but the psychology aspect and actually, you know, the, the education that you get from somebody that's a veteran, like, you know, like your dad or somebody else, uh, that, that has to play a factor, right? When you're in the confidence factor of you going into a ring, because I've seen you wrestle, you know, God knows how many times at this point, you know, through Catalyst Wrestling and everything else. And you, the last, I guess, in my opinion, the last two years, there's, there's such confidence with what you do. Um, I don't think that's confidence was really like something that came through like by by being part of my family. It, I feel like that was something that like I earned because I did. I surely did not feel as confident when I was like 18, 19 even. And that was only like six years ago. So yeah. I really feel like like you're saying that like I really picked up this confidence in the last few years. Well, it, I, in the in the ring, right? Like when you just a persona. Okay. I feel like that's with that's just growth and and with age. I, I I always I'm always fascinated by the journey, right? The journey into going from starting out training, doing a couple indies, and then being on the cusp of something. Which you know, right now you're in NWA. You're wrestling all over the world, uh, all over the country. I guess limited, right? I guess wherever you could go. Uh, I, I I'm always. I'm always so fascinated by the education you could get on that because that's something I've never had. You know, I could have all the friends in the world in, in the wrestling business, but unless you're doing it, you, you see things so differently. Um, have you, you know, going back and starting to work more now with every, everything opening up, has there been a change in, in independent wrestling that you're seeing? Because there's a lot of concern right now for a lot of performers that independent wrestling is not going to be where it was pre-pandemic, which was at a boom. <laughs> Um, I think independent wrestling is a little different than it was pre-pandemic, but not really in the sense that it's not as hot or anything. I feel like it, wrestling is pretty popular still, especially compared to how it used to be. And, um, and the more of the change that I've seen is like how, like, is more of the effects of like the speaking out movements and stuff and how everyone is kind of just trying to police the locker rooms themselves and be and like safeguard. It seems like it's less of like a boys club in wrestling, you know? Yeah, and that's a positive. You know, the the change is a, is a major positive. Uh, twenty years ago, I couldn't I couldn't do the show I'm doing because of how closed in it was. Even twenty years ago, oh yeah, you know, it was very protected, very closed in, and and now it's it's gotten more accepting and open. And I think people realize that you need to kind of expand beyond the four walls for the growth of of the business, which I think is great. You know, I also love the secrecy of it a little bit. I think everybody likes that. It's intriguing to them, but uh, it's just a fascinating industry you know top to bottom so right now you're you're building up to, to to have this match obviously with Darius Carter for Catalyst Wrestling uh you're working in NWA what has it been w working in NWA I mean listen any any pro wrestling fan right uh would the, the the you know if you're if you're a historian it means something to be in, in that organization even though it's not the biggest but the performance wise I mean match wise television wise they're doing everything really really well what's that experience been like over there I absolutely love working with NWA, and um, just like you said, there's like a, there's just an aspect of uh, traditionalism and history and everything we do. Like um, a few weeks ago when we went to the Chase Park Plaza, I, I I just remember taking a moment before the doors opened up and just sitting in that empty arena and like sitting on the stage and just looking out at everything and just thinking about all the history that went through there. And, it, and that's a lot something a lot of companies really care about these days. Yeah. It seems like so. You, you it, know, like, it, I had one gripe with that show though. Oh, what was that? The audience wasn't dressed up. Oh, I know. I yeah, wrestling at the chase. Where was the Where was the suits? Oh, I wish we had uh, all the dinner tables set around. Yeah, we yeah, had a yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I think. Listen, I think it's it's really cool. Um, you know, be, I was at the garden on Friday, right? I've been at the garden in my life probably over a hundred times, <laughs> and every time I go in there, it feels special because it's a special building. Uh, you know, a lot of people say to Rosemont Horizon, and there's so many of these these buildings to feel that way. Uh, I, I always I, I like that, you know, you're not numb to it, to be in a building like that. That's always great to see that people are are appreciative of the history of where they where they are. 
Oh yeah, I definitely have a like a great uh, relationship, I guess, with buildings. Like uh, I definitely got like a, a favorites in my head that like I definitely want to work before my career is over. What do you have? I- I'm dying to know. Definitely on top is a Hammerstein Ballroom. You know what? I have to tell you, <laughs> I walk by the Manhattan Center every day for work, right? And every day I walk by and I look at it, I'm like, this is a cool effing building. This is a really cool effing building. Every t- I mean, it, it's, it, my wife even knows, and my wife's not a huge wrestling fan. My wife knows that that's one of my favorite buildings to so go see anything. Give me, give me, give me ballet. I don't care. I'll go to that building because it's, it's such a beautiful building to watch anything in. Uh, so you got Hammerstein, obviously. You, you, did, you did the chase, which is cool. Uh, yeah, you definitely gotta go Tokyo Dome. Tokyo That's Dome, definitely. okay. Um, ooh. I've done ECW Arena, so I, I, I can cross that one off the list. Yeah. The Garden. Oh, yeah, of course the Garden. <laughs> of course the Garden. You know, nobody, it's funny, nobody's picking these modern buildings, right? Which is, which is fascinating for, <laughs> for anything. I mean, It'd be cool to wrestle in uh, the big arenas and stuff, but I feel like all the history is uh, in these small little places. If I could wrestle in the Omni one day, I, I would love to do that. <laughs> Listen, I'd love to wrestle in the Omni, and I don't even wrestle. So, <laughs> so uh, let's talk about let's talk about your journey with Catalyst Wrestling. You started, you've been there for a while now. You're their champion, uh, longest champion, I believe, right in history. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, since uh, I think December '99, longest reigning champion. Um, and, and, uh, you know, right now they're, they're, I know the guys over there, they've been working very hard at putting these shows together, uh, for some of that. So, you know, so grassroots and everybody works together. What's your experience been like over there? I love working with Catalyst Wrestling. It's just, um, it's, it's somewhere that I've been able to put a lot of myself into and not a lot of, there's not a lot of companies out there that let. Uh, their performers put themselves into their work. It's it's just kind of like a do what I tell you type of thing, and less of a, like a collective of minds, you know. Yeah, I I, I because I've been there when they when they put shows together, and I always find it interesting that you know how everybody is so open to working together and you know helping each other out and building you know especially with like promos and stuff like that. Um, I I I'm excited to see you wrestle because uh, it's been a while, and I don't think I've ever seen you in person. So that that's a cool part for me. Uh, you know, being in Jersey City doing the show, you know, obviously the Northeast has been a really hot territory. Would you like to see them kind of expand beyond the Northeast and kind of start traveling a little bit? Oh, yeah. We had uh, one show in Nashville in 2019, but now I think that was the only like traveling show we did. Yeah. And you guys I had mean, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall on that show. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. We had a, it, I've been trying to convince them to come down to North Carolina. But, uh, I, is that where you are right now? You're you're located in North Carolina. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, listen, great, phenomenal territory, right? Why why not to Catalyst to go there? It's a hot it's a hotbed for wrestling, so it's great. Um, outside of like the independent stuff, right now we are in a really interesting time. For the first time in twenty years, as a competitor on the mainstream level, you know. Uh, overall, you know, for someone that's in the business, this is a positive, right? I I mean. There's no negative. There's no bad that could come from having a competitive second company. No, not at all. I think competition spurs the best uh, like points in wrestling. I actually, it, it forces people to be on top of their game and always keep striving to be the best. You know, I spoke to somebody about this, and uh, they said that one thing that he was always concerned about was his style, and that you you know wrestling a WWE style versus. Uh, whatever else style you want to call it. And he felt that he needed to kind of cater to that style a little bit more to be, be seen. Um, do you, and, and now he feels that that's out the window because you have so many options. Uh, even if you don't go to AEW or whatever, you, you have options with, you know, ring of honor and impact and everything else. Do you, do you feel that as, as a collective people are now kind of changing the way that they wrestle? So they could, they could be exposed to different, you know, different groups. Oh, 100%. I'm sure uh, every like wrestler is trying to change what they do it for their specific crowd they're wrestling for that night. Like, um, if you go to a GCW, you're probably going to have a different match than if you go to a Southern Indie or something, you know? Like, it, it just feels like um, you got to wrestle for your audience, and it's a, it's a welcome challenge. Do, do you enjoy going outside the box? Because you brought up GCW, and I think, you know, what, what Matt Cardona has done over there. 
I don't think anybody ex- anybody that that watched him on WWE TV expected that. I think if you know him, uh, you know people could people are like, oh yeah, of course he did that. Of course he had those. He had that kind of match. But do, do you what, what? I think that's really interesting that you're seeing this happen now. And I don't think anybody expected you know Zack Ryder to be in a death match on GCW. I I think it, it's bonkers. Pro wrestling has really become bonkers, which is great. It is, and I feel like that's like a huge reason why Matt Cardona is so popular nowadays is like his willingness to adapt. And I like I feel like that's just something that he's done like his whole career is just shown how he can like adapt to any situation. Honestly, is that one uh, style that you're not a fan of for you personally? Oh, oh I, I would definitely get down in some death matches. I, I, <laughs> I, I have. A, um, uh, the light tubes freak me out, though. That's the only thing. The thumbtacks yeah. not so much, but the light tubes. Are you know I I I'm willing to bet that I, I think the GCW show that they had where um the last one that they had and I think uh, where Cardona won when those light tubes got you know all the dust and everything goes around everybody was masked up anyway I think that was the only time that that wrestling fans were very grateful of the mask man- mandate that they don't have to breathe all that stuff in uh I I think it's it's really cool that we're seeing this variety. And of course, we're going to see a tremendous variety at Catalyst Wrestling because there's so many different styles, so many different great talent over there. Uh, I want to give another plug. Catalyst Wrestling this Friday in Jersey City, right outside of New York City. You go to tinyurl.com slash steal this show, 39 Erie Street, Jersey City, New Jersey. Doors open 7 p.m. Tickets 25 to 30 bucks. Uh, very, very cool stuff. And you're going to have, obviously, a, a world title match for Catalyst Wrestling on that show against uh, Darius Carter, which I think is going to be a really, really cool show. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, before we wrap it up, I, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you like, what are you, what are you enjoying about wrestling today? It, it, you know, as of, as of today and obviously everything that's been going on the last, I guess, two weeks in, in, in pro wrestling, what, what's your favorite thing that's going on right now? So, oh, listen, I, I'm actually not a huge, uh, I don't watch a lot of TV wrestling, but seeing all the excitement that's come out of it, uh, it's just, it, it, it's inspiring because it feels like we, it, it pushes even uh, like all the independent wrestlers to work a little bit harder to make it to like those stages and be like, we see what AEW is doing and what WWE is doing and we want to push ourselves to be on those levels and make it to those stages. And not even just uh, WWE and AEW, like Impact and MLW, NWA, all these companies, like there's so many places to make money right now that it's really inspiring to see how popular it's getting all or across the board. Yeah, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Kobe, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, obviously, guys, if you're watching this, you, this is uh, this is going in between and Matt Men episode. So uh, we're going to go back to our regular program. But I, I definitely I, I'm really excited for this. I'm excited to see you on Friday. Catalyst Wrestling, Jersey City. You're defending the title against Darius Carter. Uh, this is going to be a really fun show, and I really recommend you guys come in. If you're in the Northeast area, if you're in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, head on over to Jersey City. Not that far away, guys. Doors open at 7 o'clock. Uh, there's a ton. Also, by the way, there's a ton of restaurants and bars over there. You could have a great time, hang out, have dinner, have a couple drinks. Come watch great wrestling, professional wrestling, this Friday. Uh, Kobe, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Colby Carino. You can find me on Instagram at Colby.Carino, since someone took uh, at Colby Carino, apparently. Uh, You can buy my t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Colby Carino, and also Watermaneuver.com slash Colby Carino. I also have uh, t-shirts available on my Big Cartel sites, ColbyCarino.BigCartel.com, and a whole bunch of other merch on there, too. It's all made by me. Is it really? It is. Uh, I make all my t-shirts in my garage right next to my ring. Oh, nice. um, all like my logos and stuff are made in house by my fiance. Actually, these are fantastic logos. I'm 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 actually on the site right now, and it's all the image and everything your fiance makes. It that's freaking awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it looks sure. it's it's a really I mean really awesome shirts. Yeah. Hey, I always I always like that I could be genuine. You know, when when someone's like, oh, these are my shirts, and I'm like, oh man, these are really awesome. I don't have to pretend. It's great. Uh, Kobe Carino, everybody, see him this Friday. We'll be back right after this. Take care.